What I have here is a comparison video, and that is between the Omerex M9 A3 on the right and the 92A1 on the left. First off, to get this right out in the open, um, do I recommend either one of these two pistols? No, I do not. There, I said it. Yes, I've watched some reviews online on these two pistols, and uh, you know, most of the YouTubers out there are going to rave, rant and rave about these two pistols because they're full auto capable. That's great, but if a pistol does not shoot where I aim it, out of the box, it's garbage. Now, that doesn't mean that it cannot be rectified, and uh, if it can, then, and the pistol still performs well, then, okay, it's not garbage, it's okay. Maybe even great, but again, that means that you have to put some work into it. And both of these two pistols are new pistols. Uh, they were both taken out of the box yesterday, and I have worked on both of these pistols for a combined total of a little over three hours to get them to shoot to pretty much where I aim. And I will show you a uh, 10 yard accuracy video with these two pistols. Now I know some of you out there are probably saying, hey, I've seen this pistol before um, some time ago in some of your videos and in conversion kits. It's not these, either one of these two pistols, but it's this pistol. And again, in a conversion kit where you can mount an optic to this pistol, you know, get three points of contact with it, it's an awesome pistol. Again, because it has the full auto capability. But out of the box, its point of aim, point of impact leaves a lot to be desired. So, uh, I will go over a few specs for this pistol, for these two pistols, and then show you the uh, accuracy. Next up, to go to quickly go over some specs for these two pistols. Uh, the 92A1 trigger pull is seven pounds, 14.8 ounces, double action. Single action is three pounds, 11.1 .1 ounces. The M9A3 is six pounds, 11.4 ounces, double action. Single action is two pounds, 4.2 ounces. So the M9A3 does have the lighter trigger pull overall, but shooting them both, you don't really notice it, any difference in them. Uh, the 92A1 weighs two pounds, six and a half ounces. The M9A3 weighs one pound, 14, Point 14 and 1 8 ounce that's due to it having the polymer frame uh, now this uh, M9 does have an advantage with the being it has the vertex frame and it has more aggressive checkering on the front and rear back straps as opposed to the 92A1 so you do get a much better grip and um, on the M9 but when it comes to a Beretta 92 model, of course, I'd much rather have a metal frame, actually like the real uh, firearm counterpart. The 92A1 has an advantage with it being, again, it does have the metal frame. It also has a safety slash decocker where the M9A3 does not decock. It does go to safe, but it will not drop the hammer. So um, this, pistol right here actually more is like the actual firearm as opposed to this one here um, right now currently December of 2023 Pyramid Air has both of these pistols on sale the 92A1 is $144.99 the M9A3 $122.99 roughly a $22 difference um, for that $22 difference uh, I would much rather have the metal frame and a decocker but Again, I really do like the Vertex frame, and it does have a threaded barrel for those of you that like to add a suppressor. 
Um, again, non-adjustable sights, and they both use the same magazine. Um, it's interchangeable, except this one comes with an FDE color. Of course, this one comes with a black magazine, uh, black color, and both magazines uh, truly suck loading them. So next up is the 10-yard accuracy test for these two pistols. It's currently 46 degrees out. Uh, has a little bit of a breeze. Um, the M9A3 will be first on the right. The 92A1 will be on the left. And the ammo I'm using is the Hornady Black Diamond. All right, let's go take a look. All right, first up, the M9A3 on the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. And the ninety two A one on the left. We got uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So looking at those two groups, they're, you know, roughly the same as far as size-wise, generally. Um, the 92A1 is up a little higher, more centered, as opposed to the M9A3. But again, this is 10 yards on a 46 degree day, got a slight breeze. And this is after three hours of work for both pistols. So again, like I said, when I first got these pistols, both pistols uh, were shooting from the center to the right, roughly about right here. And you can see where they are now, they're more centered. And that is from shimming the barrels on both pistols. As you can see, definitely an improvement. And both of these pistols, I was aiming center of the red dot. So 
So can the accuracy be improved? Yes. It's a lot of work. I didn't show it. It's a pain in the ass. But there it is. Next up for a real test of these pistols accuracy. From the cone to the target is 20 yards. I'm gonna fire 10 shots from each pistol standing and uh, afterwards show you what the groups look like. Again, the M9A3 will be first on the right. Again, it's 20 yards, 10 shots from each pistol. Uh, this is the M9A3. I see one, two, three, four, five. And looks like the other, I got one, no, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it looks like they were dropping off pretty well. Again, it is 46 degrees out. 92A1. Holding, holding both the impact at the, I mean, center of the target here. It's where I'm holding the, putting the iron sights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Again, that's 20 yards. Now, out of the box, there's no way I could have done that. Um, none of these shots would have happened, made impact at 20 yards out of the box. But I will say that's uh, quite impressive for a BB pistol. Again, that's three hours worth of work for both pistols. So for my final thoughts on these pistols, um, they do have an advantage being that they have the little switch on the side so you can shoot them in full auto. Um, me personally, you know, I'm not a big fan of a pistol like this in full auto because it's like 
almost impossible to control. But to put one of these pistols into a chassis and to have it being full auto is absolutely awesome. So, you know, you, you put this in a chassis, you mount a red dot to the top of it, you have your full auto capable uh, switch here, and um, it's awesome. It, it really is. Again, inside a chassis, but just like this, to me, personally, it's just a waste. Because unless you're like five feet on something, you're not going to hit it. So that's about the full auto capability. Now, I only shoot these pistols as a handgun in semi-auto. I don't even switch it to full auto. Again, like I say, it's a waste of time to me. Waste of time, ammo, and CO2 cartridge. But um, I like this Vertec frame on the M9A3. I like the more aggressive trip, uh, checkering. Again, but, you know, it gets negative points for it being a polymer frame. Again, these are new pistols. Just took them out the box yesterday and had to spend time, you know, shimming the barrels to get them to hit where, they, where you saw in the video. Uh, anyone interested in doing that, I can show you. Well, of course, you know how to disassemble the pistol. But what you're going to do is, if you're interested in shimming these barrels to get them to kind of hit where they should be hitting, you're going to drive out these two pins from left to right. Remember, not right to left, but from left to right. So you're going to drive them out this way, both pins. You're going to pull the inner barrel out. And at the tip of the barrel, what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, some electrical tape. You're going to cut uh, strips about an eighth of an inch. And you're going to apply them to whichever side of the barrel. So my, my pistols were shooting to the right. So what I did was, again, drive out the pins, pull the barrel out, cut an eighth of an inch of uh, electrical tape, place it on the right side of the barrel, push it back in, and that basically is causing the barrel to shoot to the left side. And then you're gonna drive the pins back in. This one was the easier one to do because I only require, it only required one piece of tape to bring this over to the left. So the M9A3 was easier to do once you do that, then you're going to drive your pins back in, reassemble it. Yeah, and the voice is fine. And then shoot it, you know, test fire it to see where it's shooting. This one, pistol, unfortunately, required four pieces of tape. Also, this pistol is a pain in the ass because, well, actually it worked this time. It was really difficult to disassemble this pistol. But same thing with this pistol, disassemble it, pull it apart. Come on, come on. Again, the two pins, actually, I only put one pin back in this one, but you're gonna knock the pins out from left to right. And there's a reason why you're locking, knocking them out from left to right because they have the groove ends on this side. You're gonna pull it out on this barrel or the M992A1. I had to put three pieces of tape on the bottom, and one piece of tape on the right side to not only bring it up, but to push it over to the left. For this one here, I didn't do anything to it because this pistol I actually used in the conversions so by it being in the conversion, I have an optic on top. So of course I can adjust the impact that way. But that's the uh, down and dirty. If you wanna, you know, shim these barrels to get them to shooting, shoot where they should be shooting. You know, um, unlike a lot of other videos that I've seen online where, you know, 
just about every other video on either of these two pistols. You know, the guys take the pistols out of the box. They shoot the pistol. They do their Kentucky windage or they're like, I don't know, five or seven yards from the target. And, you know, 10 yards, that, me is my standard. If, you, if I can't hit somewhere near the bullseye at 10 yards by aiming at the bullseye, pistol's no good for me. So that's it on today's video and see you in the next one.